Good afternoon and welcome once again from San Francisco where we're uh, reporting from Semicon InterSolar. Uh, Lauren Sutherland with Zone 5. I'm here today with Bob Burkhart. Good afternoon. Bob, good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, Bob is a several year veteran of Applied Materials and he is one of the Micron Account Team Managers. He spends a lot of time in uh, Boise, Idaho, and Lehigh, Utah, and occasionally back in the state of Virginia. Bob, some of the buzz this week uh, has been primarily about Intel spending up to $4 billion to uh, help ASML complete its uh, UV, EUV tool and do the 450 transition. Uh, the other interesting news was the perhaps uh, startup consortium in Europe for 450 to be based at IMEC to uh, essentially compete with G450C, which is being built now. Albany, New York. The question I would have is, given your depth of background in lithography and metrology, what are these technologies as they come to fruition? What's the impact on you and what you do for Micron? Well, thank you. Uh, actually, you know, the investment uh, by Intel is uh, provides a leadership that we need to go forward. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of uh, expectation of EUV cutting into uh, production. 2015, and there's still a lot of work to accomplish in the source requirements and, and to get the throughputs and illumination required. The investment uh, sounds significant, but if you look at it in the long term and the price of litho tools uh, and the direction it will take the industry, uh, I think that it's still uh, there's still more funding required, uh, especially if you look at the cost of uh, the development of these tools. And uh, because it's not only the process tools with the masks in the background as well. So uh, the leadership by Intel is, is uh, good, it's very much needed, and there'll be more investment required. Competition between IMAC and, and uh, the United States uh, with 450, competition is always good, but the biggest challenge will be the technical challenges of competition, it will be the money challenges of competition. So how much money is out there and who's going to invest and when. Many of the uh, leading uh, companies are uh, already on strained and tight budgets, uh, investing in fabs is uh, quite expensive, uh, especially with return on investment coming in. So I, I think that uh, the investment is needed, it's warranted, and I wouldn't worry too much about uh, the competition. Uh, it'll be uh, more difficult for the equipment manufacturers to determine where they're going to provide their, their leadership and, and which organization. I think probably somewhere along the line there'll have to be some type of unionization or joint uh, development program together, which will be a natural outcome over time. One of the things that uh, Spencer and I have been doing the last few days is we've talked with Brian Tui at SAA, we've talked to uh, Dr. David Lamb, who a lot of people still remember, and we also talked to Dan Hutchison. And the question we threw at them was, given that we already have a commitment to Gene 450C by the Big Five Chicken, OEMs. And now we've got the Flemish government trying to do the same at IMAC. The question we threw these gentlemen was, can the chip makers and the OEMs really afford to support both the consortiums? Their answer was no. Division of labor, right? I think if you select, a, uh, you know, and, and that'll be the challenge, who takes the sweet spot, who gets the glory, who gets the glamour projects, but the division of labor, split the projects, and you'll be able to hit the timeline required. There's a lot to be accomplished. Regarding, uh, you know, uh, integration of into the fab and the development, you know, the early side of this, you know, there's so much on the photo side of it, but then you have to look at process te technology and regimes that uh, all the equipment manufacturers will have to come forward with. And then how do you uh, bring forward the metrology uh, to sustain that? Uh, you know, uh, everyone says that the metrology is uh, dead at 22 nanometers. Actually, there's a number of technologies uh, that are available, time domain inspection, uh, x-ray, CD7 analysis, but they're not production ready. And they won't meet the regimes that the throughput's required. Uh, from a metrology standpoint, integrating the hardware is actually uh, fairly easy because we, you don't have to deal with some of the uh, plasma routine you know, challenges in chambers. But uh, if you just think of uh, the simple idea that you'd have to accelerate the stages 2x of what they are today and do at least quadruple the data rates, 
and it's already straining some of the uh, uh, capabilities today. And there you have it from one of the experts with boots on, on the ground. Uh, Bob, we appreciate it. Thank you, Lauren. Folks, tune in with us later, and uh, we're going to give you a wrap-up on the week uh, to include people like Bob and some others. Thanks for tuning in.